So what do you do when you finish college? You go to work. Hello YouTube, Dro Talks here. Today I'm coming at you with the audiobook review of Corpies, which is Drew Hayes' standalone book, his only standalone book for at this moment. Hope there'll be more. You could actually listen to this and there is uh, no spoilers at all for the superpowers universe. So you're safe. You're safe here. This is, you, you can listen to this. This is a good entry level to get into this world. And for those less patient of you out there, do I recommend? Do I not recommend? Anything superpowers related? There's a recommendation by this guy. So yes, definitely uh, go out there. Download uh, Corpies. Uh, listen to the audiobook. It's awesome. Well worth your time. So why is it worth your time? Well, let's get into it. Your superpowers year one through four is about four powers become supers going to college. Corpies is about Titan. The Titan. The one and only. And Titan was a disgraced hero that retired due to a, uh, a disgraceful act. And not disgraceful in the way that you think. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But basically, he stepped outside of the limelight, retired, opened up a bar, and he was gone for 10 years. And in Superpowers Year 2, small spoiler, not really a spoiler. You're safe. You're safe here. Just listen. You're good. No spoiler warnings. His son, Herschel, goes to visit Titan in his seclusion to ask for help on how to get stronger. Because, of course, they are competing with very powerful people, and they seem to have hit a, a ceiling. That's how you first meet Titan. You hear about him here and there throughout the book, but that, that's how you first meet him. That's where you learn why he was disgraced. So that was in year two. After year two, Corpies was released, and here we are with Titan. He gets his own book, and does he deserve it? So after his sons visit him, after not seeing him for a long time, he decides to put back on the cape and cowl. And he goes to the town of Brewster, which I believe is a fictional town. If it's not... Comment below, let me know. I would like to visit that town. I like visiting towns of books that I read. So he comes out of retirement, but no one wants to hire him as a superhero. No one wants to him on their team because he's too controversial. And we'll talk about why he's controversial. And basically, he, he is very polarizing. So he ends up with the peer team. Peer is the proper team, but all the superheroes call them corpies. For like corporate bastard wannabes. And the superheroes think very poor of these individuals. They're supers that couldn't hack it to become a superhero or couldn't get accepted uh, to become a superhero. And uh, they wear costumes and the, the superheroes just call them pretend superheroes. And very, very, very horrible attitude towards these corpies, including Titan. When they told me he wanted to be that he his only possible option was to become a hero liaison to a, corp, uh, a corpies team. Uh, peers team is the actual term and peers stands for privately independent emergency response so I mean they, they have a real title Titans costumes are important in this he goes to Brewster with six costumes and uh, they start getting counted down and, and that's kind of where we see ourselves knowing that mm, it's getting real it's getting real it's getting real quick Corpies brings a lot to the superpowers universe as it broadens a lot of aspects that are mentioned but not defined and here we define them so here we actually define the class levels that they rate supers and they re they rate them based upon destructive abilities and i wrote down the class levels here because i don't have that good of a memory so we start with our ntc class which are also they're called nox ntc stands for non-threatening combatant so these guys are really just pushovers then the next class is the standard class and that's uh, supers that can do significant damage to their surrounding areas. They're, I mean, they're, they're, they're a threat. The next class is the demolish, the, the demolition class, excuse me. And they can level several city box, blocks in a very short period of time. Titan, even though he's one of the most powerful superheroes, he's actually a, a dem, demolition class. Because even though he is literally unstoppable in 
the strongest person in the universe as of yet that we've seen. He, he's uh, held by his own speed. He can only run so fast and destroy so many. So this is about damage. It's not about who's better than who than who in terms of one hero versus the, the next. The next class is the Manhattan class. And they have a damage capability equal to several nuclear bombs going off. And then the final class is Armageddon, which... Armageddon. So that, that that type of information is what we start learning in Corpies. This world just starts expanding and, and we get to see superheroes for the first time doing what superheroes do and the fallout of that when, when superheroes fight with supers, they leave a massive destruction. That's where these Corpies come in. These Corpies come in to help do cleanup with uh, other several government agencies. You know, when uh, fires are set, either due to a power that lost their, their abilities or a super that attacked an arsonist and you know we got we got humans doing bad stuff too that's where the peers or this these corpies group go in they're not allowed to engage supers in any way only superheroes can engage supers because of the resulting damage that can that can become of that we learn more about the dva which is the department of very human activities yep i think i said that right so that's that's another world expanding view so let's talk about Titan. He is the centerpiece. The Pierce team that he works with, they're, they're important. They're, they're very strong supporting characters. But this is definitely not super powers where we got a lot of main characters. This Titan is the main character. So let's talk about his fall from grace. So Titan, again, image for a superhero is everything. And Titan was basically the family man. He was America's darling, American, America's sweetheart. He was who every man wanted to be, who every woman wanted to be with, but no one would even dare to break what he had because it was almost considered sacred. So what happened? How did he fall from grace? Well, it turns out that Titan was actually a homosexual, and uh, he lied to himself. He lied to his family. He did his best to live a heterosexual life, but, you know, the human body wants what the human body wants. He he craved in. He had an affair with another super. And they caught him on videotape. And it became the scandal of the decade. It's called the Titan scandal. So Titan, now I want to be clear on this. Titan walked away from the limelight. Not because of his sexual orientation. That's not why he walked away. The main reason he walked away was the aftermath that happened with his family and he stayed away from them because he didn't want this backlash to fall on them so i mean call it a right decision call it a wrong decision but uh he was never after after it came out he never tried to hide who he was actually the bar he opened up was a gay bar so i mean he, he definitely embraced who he was after uh he came to terms with it you know but he basically had the most spectacular coming out of the closet moment that anyone can have in a fictional world, of course. So he was out of the limelight for about 10 years, lost contact with his wife, his sons. He was embarrassed of his actions. Uh, again, he's a he's an honorable guy, and basically he lived a lie. He lived uh, a lie for a, a lot of years, and uh, he couldn't deal with that. So when he came back, he came back as a as a homosexual superhero, and I I respect that. I I think um, that makes him an even better character for the way that he handles a lot of situations and what he brings to the table. It's um, he has a lot of uh, of friendships, a lot of friendships with a uh, with a lot of men, and they're they're just platonic friendships, you know. So I like I like the way that they show that. I like the way they show how one of those friendships kind of begins to become something more. There's a little bit of a love story on there. And uh, I, I really like the way that's explored. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's definitely a refreshing take on superheroes. I can, t I can tell you that. So I don't really want to do spoilers. So I'm not going to say who the love interest is and stuff like that. You got you to gotta watch for yourselves. So let's talk a little bit about the peer team. So on the peer team, we got Galvanize, Hexalence, Bubble Bubble, and Zone. And all these individuals have superpowers, but they're just not powerful enough to be considered superheroes. That's why most of them haven't gotten into the, the superhero certification program. 
with the exception of Hexolence. She can actually summon uh, demons, but she can only summon three of them. And, and they're pretty powerful, so she, she has an opportunity to go there. Galvanize, he basically can make any human or super perform at their utmost best. When he just says, do your best, and then you get like a boost, and all of a sudden you can run that mile and a half in, in 10 minutes, no problem. Bubble Bubble can create some bubbles that she can float, but uh, their size, strength, and capacities are very limited. Including their speed capacity. And we got Zone who is basically just a superhuman. He can't compete on the level of superhero type superhumans. But he's definitely the fastest human alive. The strongest human alive. The most ag agile human alive. But when you eclipse him to superheroes. He, he's still basically on the level of human. So again, very useful powers. But just not enough to make that leap. There, there are no titans here again with the exception maybe excellence then we got gail which she's a team leader of elemental fury and she hates uh titan for very good reasons not the reasons for what i mentioned before uh she's a very strong character so that's another thing i want to talk about here uh the, the superpowers world has a lot of diversity in there too it's it's something that i do care about but i care about story more so i mean if you have a all Asian, all Caucasian, all African, all Hispanic, all whatever story. If the story is good, that, that's really what I care about. I mean, I, I, I do like diversity as much as the next guy, but the, you can have a diverse cast and the story sucks, and I'm, I'm sorry, it's not going to help you. But with the Superpowers universe, I can say it is a very diverse cast. You, you get a lot of ethnicities going around. That is... Probably because it's a huge universe. I mean, this is a standalone book. This is by far the shortest of the superhero, super-powered uh, world-themed books. And even though, I mean, I, I'm only, I only listed a tad bit of the characters, and we already went over a lot of them. Jeremiah is a subtlety hero, and he leads a, subtle, a subtlety team. The guy that feeds Titan a lot of his information. Uh, he's a very, he has an amazing power, but... I'm not going to mention it here because that, that would be a spoiler. So who's the villain? You know, I'm starting to get this from Drew Hayes that he just creates a world and anyone can be the villain. This book in particular, uh, you know, reading a lot does have negative consequences or listening to a lot of stories. There are certain characters here that are so good, so amazing. That I just naturally said, that's the villain. That's the one that's doing all this funny business. Then you have some that are very obvious. I said, ooh, no, that could that needs to be the villain because it just makes sense. Um, at the end of the day, the villain is actually a surprise. It surprised me. It goes along with uh, the villains and some of the superpower books. I want to give it away. It's very satisfying, very different, very out of left field. I'll be honest, I did not see it coming. And uh, very enjoyable. So definitely the villain in this one is, is very interesting. So I said to pay attention to his costumes. So yeah, he took six costumes with him. And there's basically six events in this story where he gets his costume damaged. And it becomes kind of a counter. And you, you start looking forward to that next excursion. Um... I'm going to go through a very brief glimpse of what these are. So we got a rescue that happens early on in the book. We got an attack on a mall. We got an assessment. That's actually one of the better ones. We got how we met Eli, the, the gang member. We got a scene remnant from the Iron Giant. I'm just going to call it like that. And then we got some sort of bond moment. Let's hold that. That, 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 I had to take that phone call. Don't worry, I'll delete this off out of, all out of the thing. So yeah, those were the six attacks. So the story definitely five out of five. I'm a fanboy. I'm I'm an official superpowers fanboy. Let's just let's just claim it. It is what it is. Narrator Kyle McCarley. Five out of five. 
I started following him on Twitter. I'm going I'm to electronically stalk him like I electronically stalk Drew Hayes. It's just uh, I didn't realize how many voices he does for other media. So uh, definitely check Kyle McCartley out because he is amazing. Five out of five. Listenability. I'm listening to it my third time right now. I'm, and I'm already like more than halfway done with it. I think that's enough said. Five out of five. Overall, this is a five out of five. So I cannot stress superpowers enough. Uh, I bought I bought this shirt just um, because when you li- when you like something that much, you really should have something to kind of show it. And uh, it, it really is a good universe. Uh, please give these guys some love. Go out there to Audible. All the links will be provided below. Go to Amazon. Go to his website. Get some merch. Pick it up. Whatever you got. He does not sponsor these videos in any way. But Drew Hayes, if you're out there, and, you know, I guess it probably don't make sense anymore because I already made all the videos. Well, there's still, there, there's two left. There's year three and, and year four. So, hey, Drew Hayes, you, you want to sponsor? So, can't, can't, no one can say anything because I already started doing it before you did it. So, it, it's all right. It's all, it's all good. Number love. So, that's been uh, Drew Talks. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Have you listened to Superpowered? Comment below. I'm excited to get to meet all you other Superpowered Hero fans out here. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hit that like and subscribe. Ring that bell to get notified. And we'll see you next time.